Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, did a nightmare come true for one couple after one of them had an actual nightmare? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And it is an 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com and if you like our show, become an extra podcast person, an EPP as we call them. Sign up to do that at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. $5 a month gets you access to all of our bonus episodes, advanced episodes of the show, and a whole lot more. So it keeps our show on the air. We greatly appreciate that support. Tony and Harper with you on today's episode of the program. I hit 124 followers on TikTok. That's awesome. What are you doing on TikTok these days? Our cool transition videos, stuff like that. I, I find it interesting. Some of those real like fast ones that you do, they're really kind of fun. Like to weird music and stuff. They're neat. If someone wants to follow you on TikTok, where what what's your uh, what's your your name or handle or whatever it's called? My TikTok user is HLV nine six one. All right, HLV nine six one. If you want to follow Harper there on the TikTok, <laughs> the TikTok, TikTok on the internets. <laughs> oh yeah, and also go follow <laughs> you. me. Yeah, at Tony Bruski. Tony Bruski. Yeah. B R U E S K I. I haven't. I I I used TikTok for like two weeks when I got it, and I found it really fun and interesting. But it's like I don't have time because <laughs> I'm I'm doing all of these other things like running our shows and our life and being dad and keeping everyone alive and fed and happy and healthy. That I just I I somehow in the midst of all that find it difficult to spare a moment to make a TikTok. Believe it or not, it's, it's hard hard to find the most. It's literally 60 seconds. Yeah, but if you want to edit it and make it really cool, it takes time to put together a good video. It, it does. And I have a very um, high bar that I set for myself with everything that I put out there. Yeah. So I don't do a lot of just raw things. I mean, this show we record in one take, but when I'm producing something like that, I like to sit there and produce it and add this element and that element and it's fun. But that's where I like, it's like, if I'm not going to do it to the standard I want it to be, I'm just not going to do it. So that's why I don't, I don't put anything real half-assed out there, but this is how I am. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to our first letter of the day. It says, this is a story about a nightmare that I had, but nightmare does not do it justice. I honestly believe there is a supernatural element to this dream. For some, this may be extremely hard to believe, but this dream had such a profound impact on me that I know deep down it was not just a typical nightmare. First, it was a very linear quality to this dream, you do not typically get in dreams. It felt like real life, even down to the details. When I woke up, I immediately bolted upright in a panic. My very first thought upon waking was, evil is real, and it just visited me. The following is a recount from the nightmare from start to finish. My husband and I walk into a hotel room. It's a typical hotel room, two beds, a dresser with a TV, and a small table. I had to pee, so I put my stuff down on the bed, and I walk into the bathroom. However, I notice immediately that the bathroom is not your typical hotel bathroom. First to the left, there's a long, ornate vanity table that looks like it's made of wood. Immediately ahead of the toilet, or is the toilet, but to the left, the same side as the vanity, is a small set of steps that lead down to the door. I think this is odd, but I sit down on the toilet to take care of business. Before I have a chance to pee, I notice that the door next to me slowly swings open just a little bit. I quickly get up and walk down the steps to the door. It is very flimsy. I open it a little wider and find myself looking into a basement with cement flooring and walls. 
There's washers and dryers. To the left, I see a man and a woman talking. They do not see me. They're talking in a very rapid, hushed tone, and they both look very concerned. They shut the door and sit back down, and that is when I notice another door. This door is next to the vanity sink and is also large and ornate looking, perhaps mahogany. Again, very out of place for a standard hotel bathroom. And as I'm looking at it, this door slowly slides open to reveal a staircase. I cannot see where the staircase leads. All I can see is a landing and a wall and a second flight of stairs leading who knows where. At this point, I'm sufficiently creeped out. But dang, I must pee. I slide the heavy wooden door closed once more. I go sit back down, but I barely have a chance before it slides open again. This time, what I see through the open door is a lot more terrifying than a staircase. I'm staring into a church with dark red carpeting and stretching away on both sides are rows of pews. In the middle of the center aisle is a headless figure in a long black robe. I just stand there transfixed to this figure slowly, it's waving its arms around in a strange pattern. Then to my horror, a head slowly rises from the folds of the robe. It looks like a child's head, but it's ghastly with a whitish gray pallor and sunken eyes, almost like a zombie. At this point, I scream my husband's name. I turn towards the door that will get me out of this hellish bathroom, and I scream Jason one more time, and I'm terrified. As soon as I reach the door, I wake up. I later told one of my spiritual friends about this nightmare. I explained to her how I woke up with a sudden jolt and had the immediate reaction that I just had experienced true evil. She told me that it seemed like something in the nightmare was trying to lure me in, hence the doors that kept opening and the staircase leading to a mysterious place. It was not until probably a year later that I made another connection. You see, my husband and I are amateur paranormal investigators. It's a fun passion and hobby for us. At the time of this nightmare, we were only just starting out and had been to a few haunted locations, but later we'd begin investigating several haunted B&Bs. I'm wondering if this nightmare could have been some sort of warning. If the day ever comes that we book a room that has a haunted bed it's at a haunted bed and breakfast, and I walk into a bathroom that looks like the one I dreamt, you better believe I'll be hightailing it out of there. Thanks for reading my story. If you choose to do so, I have others, and perhaps we'll write in again sometime. Love the show. It helps me get through the work day. I'd love to hear if you have heard of any similar types of stories. Ashley. A door in a bathroom that leads to a basement with an old couple t- whispering. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Who hasn't had that before? Why? It's a dream. So, Just why? Because dreams don't make much sense a, a lot of times. or They don't seem to make sense in like a literal form. And a lot of things in dreams are symbolic of things that our mind is trying to put together. Um... The fact that she had to go to the bathroom, I mean, that's a sense of urgency right there. It seems like almost there was like a crossroads there, I would say, if I were to do like a dream analysis of it, of, you know, she she's trying to get something that she has to do, hence going to the bathroom. You got no choice in that matter. That has to be done. Um, but there was all these other things almost trying to pull her away from it that really had nothing to do with what she needed to get done. I wonder if there was other things in her life that she had a lot of anxiety about at that moment that were kind of being represented there. Now, the idea of the church and all the pews and the guy with the robe and the child's head that po- now that's just flat out creepy. Yeah, I did have a dream once that was somewhat like that. I, there, there's there's this town that I visit in my dreams every now and then. Sometimes I'm just popped into it. I don't know why I'm there. I don't know how I'm there. I don't know where it is. It reminds me of a town that I lived in once, but it's it's like a uh, upside down version of it, if you will, where huh? where everything's just not quite right. It, it's it's not the it's not the town I lived in, but there seems to be elements of it that make remind me of it. And in this dream, there was one time I remember just exploring and then walking into a little chapel, or so I thought. And it was very similar to what uh, she described, where it was all the pews and the dark red carpet. And it was very dark in there. And I, I don't remember like any any figures or anything like that, but it felt evil. It felt like, you know, somebody's going to say this is like a religious place, but it felt like it was maybe 
at one time supposed to be like a positive religious type place, but somehow had been overtaken by negativity. And it, it was a very unsettling scene in that dream. And I don't know why I came across it. And I don't often have things in my dreams that I look back and go, oh, this feels like it's evil. But that place felt like it was evil. And I don't know what it was, and it creeped the hell out of me. And I normally do not get creeped out in dreams. Nightmares don't really scare me all that much because most of the time I know what I'm dreaming. But I will say I did feel uncomfortable in that portion of my dream. And I was like, I don't, I'm not cool with this part. Like, I want out of this. I'm ready for this dream to be done. This is getting too dark. But um, I, there, I don't know. There was something about that. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to guess with this experience, could it have been some sort of message? Could it have been? Sure. It, without more in the physical world to connect it to, I guess it'd be really just kind of hard to say um, uh, flat out uh, if there was more to it. But I know keep in mind, keep it, keep that in mind as you investigate. Um, and if you have more dreams, look for correlations um, and possible physical um, connections that could be there. Thanks for uh, sharing that story with us. 855-853-4802. Our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi, let's hear your story. Hi, Tony, Carol, and Harper. Um, I'm a new listener and a first-time caller, and I wanted to tell you a story that happened to me a while back. Um, my family has had a history of paranormal, strange stories, you know, but um, this story happened uh, late summer, early fall of 2007. Um, my parents had just divorced, and my mom had bar had bought a large Victorian home that was built around the 1860s or 1870s. And it was, clo it was close to the college I was going to at the time in Northeast Ohio. So it was easy for me to commute to campus as well as living with her and helping her fix up the place. The home was large for just the two of us and her three dogs. And it was one split up into a duplex and apartments. So we decided to renovate the home and try to restore it back to the way it was and fix it up. So when we were going through the home with the realtor, I made some comment like, wouldn't it be cool if this place is haunted? And my mom, who used to be a paranormal investigator, was like, oh yeah, that would be so cool. But when I looked up the realtor's face after having said that, she had this very strange, shocked look to her face. And it proceeded me to ask, well, is this place haunted? And but she just kind of shrugged it off as if she didn't know. But we fell in love with the place and our offer was accepted. Um, but during our final walkthrough before getting the keys, a male realtor um, came out of the house and was refusing to go back into it. And he only wanted us to sign the paperwork to the house out in the driveway, which we thought was very odd. And clearly something had spooked him, but we just chucked it up, you know, it's an old house. Um, so as we were moving in and getting settled, we didn't really notice anything too out of the ordinary at first until we had started hiring the workers to fix up the place. Um, the first worker uh, was working in the kitchen area. It was his first day. He was working all by himself. And when I came home from work, nothing had been done and he had abruptly left, I guess, and was refusing co to come back to the house. So that was a little odd. And he, again, no one would tell us why. Another time, we had an electrician who was approaching the home who claimed to had seen a woman in period clothing peering down at him from the upstairs window. He, too, refused to enter the property and asked one of his colleagues to finish the job for him. And then a different worker who had no idea of the prior workers quitting um, was laying, uh, was peeling up carpet and saw a woman at the top of the stairs and described her exactly the same as the electrician. She was in a period dress, white clothing, but he said that the expression on her face scared him. She just did not look happy. <laughs> so it became strange to my mom and me that several grown men who were working on our home were refusing to come into it while my mom and I had not experienced anything at all. I think the first thing that we started to experience or noticed was things were moving, uh, especially keys and wallets. Um, my mom's keys were constantly disappearing and reappearing in other places. Uh, we had a large dumpster outside because we were renovating and our keys would end up in there. Sometimes our wallet would end up in there. 
my mom even had this important um, appointment to go to, and she ended up missing it because she couldn't find her keys. Well, all of a sudden, the keys appeared out in the driveway next to the car hours after her appointment. Um, and we also had a set of keys appear that no one knew who they were. Uh, they appeared in, in the upstairs kitchen, and we couldn't figure out where these keys came from. We asked all the workers, nothing. And all of a sudden, just as they appeared, they disappeared. And it wasn't until months later when my mom was exiting her car that these keys fell out of her lap, like magically appeared. And she still to this day cannot figure out how that would have happened. So we began to feel like we were going crazy because our keys and wallets were disappearing and reappearing in random places. But my first incident and experience that I realized something was going on with the house was it was late that fall and early winter and I was sick in bed and my bedroom was above the dining room and the sunroom to the house. And it was early evening and my mom had told me that she was going to stay the night at her boyfriend's house, who was now my stepdad. So I said, okay, and I heard her leave. And a few hours later, while I was still laying in bed, I heard footsteps um, in the room below me in the dining room. It sounded like boots on hardwood floor. So being sick and in bed and it's a large house, I called her on my cell phone. I said, hey, what are you what are you doing at home? I thought you were staying the night. And all she responded with was, I'm not at home. So I immediately freaked out and just figured there was an intruder in the house. My now stepdad was already calling the cops. And by the time the cops came, they searched the whole house. They found nothing. They said they were sure that there was no intruder. Um, just for the fact that they searched the house, they didn't find anything, and there were no fresh footprints in the snow. So after that incident, um, my mom and I decided to go to the local library and the historical society to see what we could pull up on records and microfish. Um, we pulled up all the prior owners of the home, but one couple stood out to us was an older man and woman who were married who had died in the possession of the house. We didn't know how they died or anything, and the librarian had advised us to speak to the police officer who was oddly at the library at the same time as us. So we spoke to him, and he said, I remember that case. He said that um, the old woman had died in the hospital from health complications while the year following the the man was a podiatrist who ended up committing suicide uh, in the room off of the dining room in the sedroom. Um, he ended up shooting himself. He told us he would give us a copy of the police report. So my mom and I decided to keep this little bit of information to ourselves at the time because my two older brothers were coming to visit the house <laughs> and they were already creeped out by the house as is. So there was no way we were going to tell them what had occurred there. And they were visiting from college. Uh, they were on holiday break. And we just figured it was best that they didn't know about it. So my brothers wanted to stay the night in the living room. So my mom went to bed with the three dogs. And I went to my bedroom off of the servants' quarters. And I slept pretty well that night. But when I woke up in the morning, both of my brothers were freaked out by their experience that they had had. While then we realized one of the three dogs had gone missing. And the one dog that went missing um, would never leave my mom's side. There's no reason why this dog out of the three would run off on its own. Um, so we searched the entire house, calling his name, looking for him, and we couldn't find him. So one of my brothers said, well, what about the basement? Well, the basement is completely run down. There's only electricity and a small portion of it. There's no way this dog's going to go down there. You know, he's already scared of the stairs. But, you know, so we go down there to see if he's down there because there's nowhere else he could be. And sure enough, we go down deep into the darkest part of the basement and there he is. Something had leashed up our dog and led him down the stairs all the way to the deep part of the basement and had the handle of a leash under the old antique chair. We were just shocked. All of us were shocked. And we um, picked up the dog and took him upstairs and we gathered in the kitchen to discuss what had just happened and also what experiences my brothers had had that night. My one brother will never talk about it and will not talk about it to this day, while 
my other brother said that all he saw were shadows on the stairs and he heard footsteps and he just covered his head and didn't want to see what was going on. So uh, there, there are definitely areas of the house that we felt like were not welcoming. My mom in particular felt unwelcome in the office area. The, um, the office was where we often left our dogs shut in whenever we left the house. And one day my mom was working in the office area when I had come home from work and I heard her talking and I just assumed she was talking to somebody on the phone until I realized that she wasn't even on the phone. I asked her, I said, who are you talking to? And she responded with, well, I'm talking to you. And I had told her that I had just gotten home and hadn't said a word to her. And she had proceeded to tell me the whole conversation that she had had with me. Now, I don't know which is creepier, the fact that she was having a conversation with somebody that wasn't there or the fact that she was having a conversation with somebody who was impersonating my voice who wasn't there. Shortly after this, I was um, getting ready for a night out when with some friends. And I was alone in the house, getting ready at the bathroom at the top of the stairs. And all the dogs were in there with me when something got their attention. The yellow lab, Custer, made some soft, deep barks as if he had heard someone approaching the front door at the bottom of the stairs. I looked to see if I could see someone through the window, but it was too dark. The bottom of the stairs was covered in darkness, and I went back to looking in the mirror and applying my makeup when Custer went at it again. As I walked out of the bathroom and stood next to Custer at the top of the stairs, looking down into the black abyss, we heard a low, deep growl responding back. Custer and the other two dogs whimpered back into the bathroom, which had luckily had two entrances. So I led them out the other door and down the servants' quarter stairs and packed them all into my car. Shortly after that incident, in the, um, we decided that we were going to move. Um, in the process, we had a garage sale selling off what all we didn't need. And a woman had approached my mom out of the blue and told her that there was something bad in our house. And then shortly after that, we had a couple who used to live in the house when it was a duplex, and they would tell us of their experiences. They had disembodied voices, shadows, things moving, and physical apparitions. And at that point, another person had approached us who had claimed to have known the podiatrist who used to live in the house. And the lady had told us that uh, he was a grumpy old man who hated dogs. So thank you so much. I hope you air my story. And I love your show. Thanks. Thoughts? Demon. (laughs) Why why do you go to demon? (laughs) Well, A, um, you know how when she said that the mother, I'm not even sure if it was the mother, but she said someone. I'm pretty sure it was Mm -hmm. the mother. um, Saying that the mother was having a conversation with the girl that was telling the story, even though the girl that was telling the story wasn't even in there mm-hmm. and had just gotten there from the room. I don't think a regular spirit can do that. I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of possibilities of what they can do. I thought it was very interesting at the very end where she said that there had once been a man there, a grumpy old man that hated dogs. And the growl. And the growl. I mean, that to me is almost like Th- those sort of things can manifest themselves. And I think so many people, when there's anything just slightly negative, they think demon. There's plenty of negative people in this world. And not, we don't look at everybody who's negative and go demon. If you're dead and you're negative, they probably were just a negative person in life too. And, know, and you're going like, to be causing chaos on the other side too. I know, but all the other stuff that happened that, just does not sound like a normal spirit would do. I think there's multiple things going on there is what I think it is. I think there's more than one spirit there. I don't necessarily think demon per se, but but I think there's a lot of different things that make it very confusing because I think sometimes we're looking for one answer to the whole equation, and I think there's probably 20 different answers. Yeah, probably like 50. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 855-853-4802 is our number. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, Tony, my name's Angie, and I'm going to tell you a story of when I was about nine years old. Uh, I also involved my older sister, who was probably, I want to say about 14 at that time, um, and it involved our grandmother, which 
Unfortunately, I didn't really get to know because she died when I was young. I only have one memory of her, and I was on a lap eating a chocolate chip cookie. Um, that is the only memory I have of her. Well, in the house that I used to live in when I was growing up, um, me and my sister were sleeping together in the same bed, and we were about to go to bed, and she was against the wall on my right side, and I was going to go over and go to sleep, and I distinctly remember seeing um, an old woman dark figure before falling asleep. And when I went to sleep, I was having this dream on of seeing my grandmother, and I was holding her hand with my left hand, and I could see my sister, my older sister that we were sleeping with, um, on my left side, and it was like the glass is in between us, but my grandmother was walking through the glass, and she was holding my sister's right hand, or left hand, uh, however that would go. <laughs> and she was walking us through. Well, on my right side, I could see the walls, and the walls would look like, like internal organs, basically, like I was walking through it monster, but if you look at my grandmother, there was like white daffodil flowers and spring like all around her, but if I looked on the floor, it was all bloody. Um, my sister might have a little bit of a different way of looking at it on her side, but she basically describes almost the same type feel, and we'd walk and walk, and it felt like we were walking further in our dream. And when we got to the end, my grandmother put her hands together to have us holding hands, and she said something, and unfortunately, I can't remember what it was. But when she said, whatever she, after she said, whatever she said, um, she clapped her hands together, and I woke up with a start, sat straight up, and I looked at my hand, and I was holding my older sister's hand, and she was also sat up and looked at me, and we basically talked, and we basically had the exact same dream. Um... I kind of went through that really fast, and I apologize. But, but um, thank you for having the outlet that you have, and I look forward to becoming part of your Patreon soon, um, after I get done with my debt. And I have other stories. I'll see if I can call. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good day. Thoughts? Well, the fact that both of the sisters have the same dream is is very creepy. Mm -hmm. And with the girl that was telling the story and basically, like, saying that, well, like, um, when she was looking at the grandmother, there was, like, daisies and Mm -hmm. it it was positive. Mm -hmm. But when she looked at the ground, it was just bloody like it, it turned very quickly yeah like that turned dark yeah I, I don't know i don't know what the meaning is there with that or if, if there is meaning at all or what exactly that that all kind of represents yeah but i i think there's something to that uh in terms of of the meaning of that vision of of what that all kind of represents and stands for um so that'd be something to look into i would say a little bit deeper uh if you're really kind of interested in uh in dissecting that uh onto uh, another level thank you for sharing that uh that story with us we do greatly appreciate it and that's going to wrap up today's episode of real ghost stories online if you like the show become an extra podcast person and epp as we call them you sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories five dollars a month gets you access to all of our bonus episodes advanced episodes and a lot more keeps us on the air as well until next time for harper i'm tony thanks for listening to real ghost stories online